rock and rain show It's gonna start and break up I can't stop dancing tonight, night, night, night Oh, Frank, here we go again Talking about the 90s, 2000s for the win You already know nostalgia's my kin Now listen up and tune in We can stop dancing tonight, night, night Yeah We don't stop dancing tonight, night, night You already know Hey guys, welcome to the Frack and Friends show. This is episode 32 or 33. I don't know. I didn't check. Uh, but we have a very, very special guest for today's episode. Uh, this is one of my fondest and most memory, uh, you know, memorable things about my childhood was this kid, this guy, this grown man. He looks a little bit like Charlie Hunnam in a lot of ways. And I, at first, I really thought it was him. Got really, really excited. But we have someone even better. His name is Mr. Aaron Schwartz. Aaron Schwartz, I'm sorry. My name is Charlie. <laughs> I mean, seriously, man. Charlie you look Hunnam. like Charlie Hunnam. Oh, God. I mean, <laughs> well, you're my best friend now. Oh, uh, see, that's 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 the goal of this is making <laughs> friends, man. That's why it's called the Frack and Friends Show. Frack and Friends. I'm one of the, I'm one of Frack's friends. That's like right, it. man. That's right. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. <sighs> It's an absolute pleasure, man. It's like, you know, meeting your childhood heroes and uh, in different forms and different ways. But, um, yeah. and you I'll know, take kid, you can call me kid. I, I hey, I mean, gray hairs are enjoying that when you call me kid. Isn't it crazy, man? Like, let's we can even we can even just start there. Like, let's think about how how long it's been since you started in this industry. With how about we don't acting. think about <laughs> It's been so long, man. When I, you know, it's like how many times, how many of those years have I actually acted? Like, mm. you know, but how many, how long have I been an actor? It's been like 30 plus years, man. I, I can tell you, uh, ever Crazy. since your movie career, um, I wasn't even born yet. Yeah. You know, I, I know. Mean, I, <laughs> I show people, some people like, oh, we were talking before, before this, we were talking a little bit about like bartending and stuff. Cause I mm -hmm. used to bartend in between a lot of stuff. When people, and I'd ask people for IDs, like five years ago, I'd ask people for IDs and I'd be like, oh my God, like that's when I got my SAG card. Cool. Like I would see 1991, <laughs> that was when I got my SAG card. That's crazy, wild. man. Yeah, man. I was actually born in 1992, December 4th. So, I mean, you know. I was a Screen Actors Guild member while <laughs> you were just a thought. <laughs> I mean, maybe I wasn't wild. a thought. I haven't asked my parents, but. Oh. That's another episode. I think that's a whole, a whole set. That's a whole episode in itself, right there. To be continued with that thought. To be continued. You, know? <laughs> um, you know, first of all, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, me. you uh, you are one of the primary reasons why the show was created. It's '90s and 2000s show, and when I think of '90s, I think of Terminator 2. I think of Heavyweights. I think of DCOM, Disney Channel original movies. I think of Backstreet Boys, boy bands, you know, but, you know, um, I think one of the very, I mean, heavyweights heavy is, is in that category with Terminator 2. It is. It is because it's heavyweight, something that I watched. Like, you know, I mean, I was watching Terminator 2 when I was probably like seven, seven or eight, the first time I saw it. Robocop <sighs> in there. Yep, that's true. Yeah. There's a lot of things. So I did miss a lot of things. I, I did miss quite a bit of things, but, yeah. um, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, Mighty Ducks was something that, you know, before binge watching was known by everybody, Mighty Ducks is something that I used to binge as a kid and and, and continue doing so. Like every year, at least, I got to watch them all. Got to watch wild. them all, you know. I and, hear that about Mighty Ducks. People will binge it. Yeah. Like I, get, I get bored of it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. I mean, I how, how many times have you seen it personally? <laughs> so many times. <laughs> you know, you know, what's funny is like until this resurgence happened, I'd say like we st I started doing signings maybe six years ago again, five, wow. six years ago. And I started meeting up with the Ducks and we did like reunions. Like we went to we went to Anaheim and like skate, wow. did the flying V on on the arena. Like it was wild. But Whoa. We started playing the movies. We did these signings where they would play the movie. They would have like a screener 
and then you yeah. get to like have a meet and greet and then do signings and a lot of those signings i would re-watch the movies a lot and they were like you don't have to sit and watch the movie and i'm like no this is like epic oh. this is reliving what i went through when i was a kid sitting yeah. in a theater watching people watch something that you were some like it was i call it the biggest magic trick in the world like being mm -hmm. in uh, a feature film and it was man still to the day when i see when i hear the opening with like the blue lettering in the, uh, in the opening goosebumps. The, that, the goose goosebumps man i'm with everybody man. with those goosebumps wow and it's a lay there's another layer to those goosebumps because it was like a dream come true because i it was, was you i was a little kid wanting to act i wasn't you know there's a lot of kids that like get put into the business yeah i was a weird little five six year old who who was obsessed with like obsessed with like type a capricorn <laughs> obsessed like i need to be in movies i want to be in movies i don't know where it came from wow and like four years later that was like my dreams were coming true and so wow. when i got to sit down and watch that opening in the beginning and see my name up there that extra layer of those goosebumps still hits me to to the day wow. i'm so grateful for it yeah I mean, and, and like you said, you know, it's it's been a while. It's been a long time since the uh, Mighty Ducks in particular has been made. And I mean, there there are some new uh, versions and everything that's that's out on Disney Plus. But uh, like I always say, nothing hits like the OGs, you know, nothing. I mean, and, you know, especially with the, the new one, I thought, you know, for what it was for a new generation to get involved. That's great because then they're going to say, I got to go watch the OGs now. I got to see what this magic is that my parents and that my it's great. And they do. I'm telling me. Yeah. There's, I mean, you know, it used to be that my followers and like Instagram or Twitter, I don't even know if Twitter <laughs> exists anymore, but on Instagram or Facebook, <laughs> like the followers that I would see on social media were people my age, a little younger, maybe in their 20s, late 20s, early 30s, 40s, 50s. Wow. And like after the Mighty Ducks show came out, I was seeing 10, 11 year olds just like follow, follow and I was shocked. And it's wow. amazing. I love that that could bring back like, you know, the 80s and 90s, those type of movies aren't made anymore. They're no. trying, they're trying, they're doing TV shows that are pretty similar now, yes. which I like definitely that tv shows where all the money's at now but you know tv's <laughs> streaming it, but but it's still not it doesn't have that like it's a nostalgia now as opposed to it being of yes. the time and to see it being brought back to younger kids so they can you know kind of reset this whole like clickbait quick mm. culture it resets their like attention span i think seeing stuff like yeah. this and it's really cool to see to be a part of something like that I mean, and you just said, you know, the my favorite word, nostalgia. You hey. know, so so look, you know, growing Hashtag up, nostalgia. Hey, man, nostalgia. <laughs> you got to you got to keep the nostalgia alive. You know, and uh, this is the kind of thing that keeps it alive. This, the, you know, uh, these memories that are, you know, I I remember my co-host said recently, you know, uh, we were writing the description for this uh, Pensacon that we're doing. We're doing a live show over there, and it said, she said. For the memories you you thought you never remember, but that were always there, you know. And when it comes down to like nostalgia, man, I like man, that, man. I like that. It's genius because that's what we're doing. We're we're unlocking Pandora's box in a sense. And we're 100%. because like you know, you and I could be talking about something, then all of a sudden you start telling me about something of your childhood that you you know just unlocks in your brain, and like you know, for me, movies. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge movie lover. I grew up understanding cinema better than most kids where I live. You really? Know, I, didn't, I didn't have a lot of friends. I was bullied really, really bad all the time. Sorry, and man. I had to find an escape. Yeah. I had to find an escape, man. And so, you know, watching movies like The Mighty Ducks and everything and, you know, would motivate me to, to get up out of bed. And to go to you school. have no idea, man. You have no idea. I hear that a lot. How much that means when I hear that? Because I was bullied too. You know, I was a little chubby kid, so I was. Yeah, bullied yeah, you were. You were. Yeah, and like you know, I was also I was 
somewhat introvert. I was a class clown, but then I would like, I'm an introvert extrovert, I guess you could say. And I had yeah. my moments of just being shy. I didn't know how to make friends. And so, man, I know how that wow. goes. And to be able to like get somebody through something like that. Yeah. It means the world it really does. I mean, you know, this is, you know, there, there's a reason why, you know, we always say, you know, we, we wish we knew that we were in the good times before they passed. You know, because like yeah. for me, every day, like I even I even get emotional thinking about it all the time. Like I'll, I'll watch a, a movie and I'll see that's a, a show. Good, that's a but, good like motto. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's a good no, motto for just for just life. Yeah. Like we didn't know yeah. the good times in, until they passed. Like, yeah, man. I don't know. I'm getting a little uh, retrospective. But, you know, like, <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, like it's like the the. It's about the journey, not about the destination. That whole like pokey yeah. thing that people say. It's true, man. Like, y you know, life can be hard. Life can suck. But it's those, it's that the in-betweens when it doesn't suck. Like, you yeah. got to pay attention to those. Because those, if you pay attention, those are a lot greater than you think they are. Those are a lot. 100%. There's a lot more time going on with those than, than you think there are. I mean, it's absolutely true. I mean, when you think about it, just... You know, there was a lot of terrible things that happened to me when it came down to bullying and things. But in between those moments, there was a lot of good things. But, you know, as a human being, we don't always see the good. Yeah. You know, hey, man, <laughs> you watched the Ducks a lot. You became yeah. you watched Terminator 2. You watched all these things yeah. that were like you were part of that culture at the time. Definitely. And now you're doing the show and you're talking to people. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Culture. <laughs> I mean, not to, not to be like, Hey, you know, but like, you know, you're watching you know, celebrities, boy yeah. bands, all those people, like you're now yeah. in the mix with it. Oh, and that some, wouldn't have happened if you weren't no. going through some of those hard times. Most definitely. Most definitely. Because then I yeah. wouldn't be able to tell these stories. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an incredible thing because like, you know, growing up, you know, there was, you know, even even for you, I'm sure, like, you know, your your life as a child, especially when you started these movies uh, or, or becoming an actor, um, your life had to kind of, I'm sure, throw some curveballs along the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, my life was outside of acting. My life has been crazy. Like, come on. I was my 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 father was a Hasidic Jew, born and raised a Hasidic Jew in Williamsburg, okay. Brooklyn didn't speak a lick of English until he was 17 when he ran away. He had like, you oh. know, a tumultuous upbringing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the Hasidic community was basically created because of the Holocaust. Like yeah. they, the, the one in Williamsburg, at least the Sotmer uh, community. And so there was a lot of like, you know, second, third generation trauma going on, passed mm -hmm. down. So my dad ran away, uh, went That's to awesome. the city, didn't speak a word of English, even though he was raised in Williamsburg, Brooklyn met my mother at a yoga institute my mother was also like she didn't run away but she kind of didn't enjoy her upbringing she became a hippie he became a hippie they met halfway what? they had me and my brother <laughs> so i come from that strange upbringing where wow. like, there was like religion <laughs> embedded in the whole thing and he was like modern orthodox jew when uh, i was growing up and he was actually kind of against me doing movies when i started doing movies Wow. So cool. there was that. Yeah, because it wasn't against. He was just, this is not like what a good Jewish boy does. But I was like, I'm mm. not a good Jewish boy. I'm a good, <laughs> I'm a good boy. I'm a good human. You know what I mean? So sure. it was like, I always, you know, so it was like that whole, that whole life was there. And then the whole acting world was there. Mm. And then there was a whole Upper West Side, New York City, like thug life. which was, <laughs> I wouldn't, I mean, I was, a, I was a child actor in Disney yeah. films. I don't Let's not let's not pretend I was. A let's star. not pretend you're some kind of. No, but I was surrounded by like New York culture yeah. in the '80s, and you know, oh, yeah. crack vials on the street. Like I was, I still sound like a New Yorker if you talk to me long enough. You know, yeah, like, I, I think you do so, sound like a New Yorker. Yeah, so I've been around it, a know, lot of them. <laughs> yeah, and we're the best. We are the yeah. best. Like, yeah, true New Yorkers are not mean. Whatever yes. people say. True New Yorkers may yes. be a little indifferent about some stuff and they might mm -hmm. be like, listen, let me tell you how it is, but yes, <laughs> big, biggest hearts in the world. Agreed. But yeah, so like my life was 
definitely like man. not your normal childhood. <laughs> but man, I yeah, I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, man. most most minutes of it. Yeah. Yeah, there, there were some some tidbits here and there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so how did your life change though when it, when when you actually you know let's just say you had mighty ducks and you had heavyweights, banger at the banger to anybody who's seen those they, they all know. So surely, surely you're so life lucky for had, that too. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. life had to. I'm sorry, man. Um, so surely your life had uh, had to change in a lot of ways. Whether it was people recognizing you on the street. Uh, you know, what, what were you going to do next? The pressure of, of those kind of things. Was there anything like that involved? Yeah. That, the, the what are you going to do next pressure? Mm. Uh, that was something that I kind of put on myself, I think. Cause I was oh. that, I was that, like, I was that strange, like that strange focus when I was six until like I stopped, I tell the story to everybody, but I love the story cause it's so, yeah. it's like, it's exactly how I was. And it explains like where I was. I was six years old and seven years old on the Upper West Side, and I saw Anthony LaPaglia and Michael Keaton filming One Good Cop. Wow. And that was New York City at the time, especially yeah. in the 80s, late 80s. New York City was like just, it was Hollywood. Yeah, it and, sure was. And I was around the corner from where I grew up, and I was like, I, I need to, I need to, like, it's, it's Batman in front of me. And I didn't know who Anthony Paglio was at the time, but he ended up being like a huge actor. And I stopped them literally while they're both talking to each other with like fake bruises from like some action scene on their face. You know, they're sitting there eating their crafty. And, and I like went up to them, this little kid, and like the PAs didn't even notice that I was uh, trying to like go up to them because it's, I'm a little kid. What am I going to do? Yeah. And and my mom's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I want to like, you know, so I asked them, like, how do I do this? How do I mm. make it in this business? How do I get to where you are? And Anthony LaPaglia, to his credit, man, literally wrote down a list. Or I can't remember if I wrote it down. Sometimes I tell it wrong. And I don't want to like, if I ever see Anthony LaPaglia or ever sees this, he'd be like, I never did that. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but either he did or I wrote it. But like there was a list that was made wow, that I man. followed to a T. And within four years, three years from that time, I was in my first movie. Come and on, that's how man. crazy I was. So when I hit like 15, 16 and it started, like I did Pete and Pete and I did a bunch of stuff on Nickelodeon. Yeah. And then I was still auditioning a ton, but I saw like, it, the movement I had was so fast that I yeah. wasn't used to uh, uh, six months of not, no movement or four months of no movement that my mind started going, you're not going to, you're not going to do this anymore. You're not going to do it. And like, wow. you know, I, I think when I was 16, that got to me and I kind of like, was like, I need to like step away from all this because I'm making myself crazy. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of saved me from you know, if I kept on going and I ended up being in other stuff, mm -hmm. like that mentality is what makes a lot of people messed up in the business. Yeah. That mentality yeah. plus the fame ends up like encompassing you and turning you into like a bitter kind of like celebrities, you know? I think that's yeah. what, that's what it, <laughs> it's made of that hustle and that like joy of fame. So I went to Israel for like two years. Come on. What'd you do there? Went to Israel. My brother was, so my brother, we, the, the whole religious thing with my father, my brother mm -hmm. decided he was, my brother was a, like a legit thug. Like he was like, he was like, <laughs> he looked like Marky Mark when he was younger. Oh, he was like come thugged on. Out, <laughs> like push-ups every day, talk like this. He still talks oh, like this a little bit. Man. <laughs> and he had like the whole, like the chin, the chin strap, like, uh, yeah. uh, you know, oh, and, uh, and he, but he was like, he's a good person in his heart. And he was like, let me try to find like something good in my life. Let me try to do something. He tried religion and it ended up sticking. He's still, you know, modern Orthodox in Brooklyn. Oh, that's cool. But he went extreme. He like went super <laughs> religious and he was out there for like six, seven years. And wow. the first two years he was out there, I was like, well, he's out in Israel. Israel sounds cool. I can drink when I'm 16. It was horrible, but it, it was one of the things that was like exciting. Not you're not supposed to, but like if you, <laughs> at that time, if you reach over a bar, you know. So yeah. I didn't. I didn't go there to drink. Let's let's be straight. I'm not yeah. one of those child okay. actors. All I right. wasn't a drunk. I wasn't going out there. I actually went out there and like just 
enjoyed Israel. Like it was beautiful. Wow, man. Uh, went to school out there, did some schooling out there, came back and decided to get back into the acting world. And that was like a slow process because it was like, I left the business, it wasn't waiting for me. Mm. Came back, left again, came back. By the time I was around 26 is when I really like made the full deep dive back into the business. So what, what made you actually decide, all right, this time I'm gonna get back here. I'm gonna do this again. What was the motivation? Yeah, you know, it's really crazy. And I, I hate bringing up an ex fiance. Mm. She's a sweet girl, but it was an ex, my ex fiance at the time, she was my girlfriend and she lit a fire. Her family was very like driven. And she, she was like, you call yourself an actor, but like how many auditions have you gone on this past month? Oh, I was like, wow, none, you know, like I'm an actor, Heavy. but how much, how much work am I putting back into it? I can't just wait for it to happen. And the business was not waiting for me at yeah. all. You know, like you leave and if, unless you're like a big, big name, yeah. even if you're in movies and doing all that, you got to like jump back in. And especially if you were 16, 17, when you left and yeah. then getting back in when you're 23, 24, there's that whole child actor stamp that's on you like mm. you haven't done anything since and now you want to get back in Oof. like it's a it's a hard like thing to to maneuver yep. so she she kind of lit that fire said uh like how many auditions are you going on and like something clicked and i was like she's 100 percent right and then i just did a deep dive i went to these like there were like these intensives you can go with casting directors and agents and i got myself an agent that way and then mm -hmm. got myself uh, a manager that helped me get my agent and then got an agent and then met casting directors and like through meeting all these casting directors i booked like a soap opera here and there and yeah. then and then went to school went to acting classes non-stop because that mm. also doesn't it's not like riding a bike it's mm. like your voice changes it's the same thing when you're your mannerisms when you're, your body everything everything your experience in life yeah. you have to understand how wow. to like tap into that and when uh, I was uh, like went to these casting uh, casting director intensives and met uh, this girl was also telling me I got to get on Gossip Girl. <laughs> My ex was like, "You got to get on Gossip Girl. This show's oh, going wow. to be huge." I don't know. Wow. She's now like a, she's now a, a record label executive, so she knows. She oh, knows she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> she knows the trends. Um, and she, so I was like, she's right. Cause I saw it and it wasn't my bag, but it was still yep. something that I see that was like the mm. ads were out for gossip girl. There were crazy Everywhere, ads. Man. And this is yeah, in the beginning of gossip girl. This is the first season. Oh man. Yeah. And I the, ad, the ads were like, you know, two like, you know, early twenties couple in a steamy, like sexy pose, like mm. making out half naked. And then the parental, <laughs> the parental like guidance association or whatever was put, they put what they wrote about it, which was negative stuff. And they wrote like, don't let your kids watch this. This is, <laughs> this is, this is unacceptable for consumption, stuff like that. Come and they on. put it on the ads. They, this <sighs> genius, genius marketing, CW or WB, whatever it was. That's right. Time. Genius marketing. <laughs> and so I saw that I was like, they are like genius. And so wow. I uh, met with that casting. I like went to these intensives, these group intensives where you're, it's, it's meant to, to like have a class with the casting director, but yeah. really every, every actor does it to try to do like some networking and try to like get in front of them so they can ultimately bring them in, you know, especially yeah. if you have an agent, then you can like tell your agent, Hey, I, this is the second time I went to go see that casting director, <laughs> maybe like put a good word in for me. And it, it worked. I, I got wow. in front of, it was Mele Nagler uh, at the time. And I got in front of her, man, 20 times maybe. And then it was, and it was Mele Nagler and Daryl Eisenberg. I remember, I don't know if there, anybody cares, but yeah, I remember we do. Daryl, Daryl <laughs> Eisenberg was like the big, she was a fan of heavyweights. I found out. Oh, and, she, man. and I don't think this, she might not admit that this is why uh, I got cast because I, I think I was cast because I was I played a good Russian doorman, but yep. like that, ha like my whole like history came together the right way, and then Man. 
momentum happened from there. Man. It was wild, that, wild journey. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Dude, it was like it just, starting just did starting it. from scratch, man. I did it twice. Man. Started from scratch, got into stuff, did a bunch of stuff, and then left again, came out to LA mm -hmm. and went back into the whole thing. Got got a manager, my manager, Aaron, who you talked to. Aaron That's right. Shout out to boy. him, by the way. My That's boy, right. Aaron Sachs. Like, he is my yep. boy. The first year I was out in LA, like I got set up with uh, Jordan Kerner, who's the producer of the Ducks. I told him I'm yep. out in LA. I like dropped agencies, managers. I like decided to take a break again. The next year I came back and I was like, Jordan, I, I, I miss acting. I need to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, like, can you hook me up with people? But Jordan has been in the business since, you know, fried green Four. tomatoes. He yeah. yeah, that's you right. Know? Wow, uh, what a, man. Clifford, he did all these like kids <laughs> stuff and like back in the day. And so he's been in this business since like the early, I don't even know, early 80s, maybe yeah. before. Wow. So the people he knows now, if you're in that business that long, are huge. Yep, so that's true. He, so the people he introduced me to couldn't really do anything for me because, you know, they got it. They're, they're executives of huge agencies like caa wow. paradigm that these big agencies and they met with me yeah to his credit they were like if you're jordan's friend you're friends of mine and i spent the first two months in la meeting some of the biggest agents in the world man and they were all like we feel for you here's what you need to do get a manager first mm. and then get an agent because at your level <laughs> you can't just meet us you know Oh, and man. it was, it was, <laughs> it was like a, it was a humbling experience. And I went from ground zero again and Aaron <sighs> Sachs, Aaron Sachs, I did an intensive. He saw my reel and he signed me and he was like, let's get you out there. And like, he's been more than a manager. He's been like a best friend. He's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. Wow, man. Yeah, Aaron I mean, Sachs is the, can I curse on this? <laughs> I'll, I'll edit it out. <laughs> Aaron Sachs is the man. Is the <laughs> ship pirate. pirate. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Aaron's actually really awesome. Uh, he's yeah. uh, one of the most pleasurable things about this is contacting agents, managers, and and different people. And and when I find someone good, even just like just the communication, it could be two emails. I'm like, all right, this is a good dude. And uh, just, I, I knew immediately, this is a good dude. Like, <laughs> he's a good dude, man. Yeah. You know, he stuck with me when the, he made no money with me. Stuck wow, with me man. when he made some money. He's never made the buco bucks yet, but yeah. like, yet. it's not even yet. about that. It's not even, I mean, it's about business too, but it's not sure. even about that with me and him. Like, yeah. it goes beyond business. Like, that's, that's what you need in this business, in the yeah. entertainment business. You need a close friend. You need somebody who's like, doesn't, who puts friendship before business sometimes. Yeah. Otherwise things get muddy, you know? And I mean, nowadays, especially like you said, you know, when, when it comes down to celebrities and friendships and things like that, you know, um, everybody wants a piece or it seems like a, a good majority of people, you know, there, there has to be something in it for them. And, uh, it's part of the industry, part of the biz. Part of the man. reason I left that beautiful, sunshiny state, man. Because oh. I will miss LA weather. I miss it so much, but I, I had to leave because mm. part of the reason is there's a lot of, well, the pandemic, but there's a lot of people <laughs> out there. And it's not like blaming. They're not empty. People are people. And LA is not filled with fake people, like they say. Right. LA is filled with a lot of people who are desperate to make it. And when you have yeah. that desperation and you don't like anchor yourself to something real, you ultimately mm. look fake. You seem fake. Definitely. Was there a reason why you continued? Like you just, you, you knew there was like, for instance, like funny uh, for uh, gossip girl. Um, yeah. You, you just knew like there was something there as you kept going. Man, even if there was nothing there, yeah, I hate to say it. I, mm. I, if, I, 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 I'm not somebody who like, it sounds like I'm being like boastful. I'm not somebody who thinks they're good at acting. And so that sure. I keep on going, I know I'm a good actor, Yeah. but if I knew, or if I had the hint that I wasn't a good actor, I would find another avenue in the business. Wow. You know, I mean, I am yeah. right now, like that's, I'm writing something right now and that's my little like 
board, literally painter's tape on my wall. Yeah, I was like, it looks like painter's tape. <laughs> it is. It's painter's tape, and it's like it's basically breaking out acts and stuff. I still wow. do that. Too. I, I mean, who knows what will come with it, but uh, I love it. I love yeah. storytelling. It's, it's such a cliche. I, I you're, love you're good at story. it, too. I love storytelling. <laughs> it's all about storytelling. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it is. Yeah, you know, it really. And so, like, it's. I love the, like I said before, like the magic trick of it. Of yeah, movies ultimately are my like. You know, I love it, but movies are kind of not obsolete, but they're not the bread and butter anymore. But sure. TV shows, TV shows are my new movies now because they're oh. they're long movies broken up. Literally, <laughs> they literally are. All the TV shows now are like. I was 20. just watching that Marvel show Moon. What's it called? Um, Moon Knight. Moon Knight with uh, Oscar Isaac. Oh, and Oscar man. Isaac. That was pretty great. I'm not a fan Oscar. of Marvel Disney for most part, but that one right there felt like move an over, independent movie. Uh, move over Split. What's his What's his name who does oh, Split? J- James oh, James McAvee. James McAvee is yeah. the pirate ship. <laughs> uh, but, but, he is. but Oscar Isaac put yeah. a whole new level on uh on disassociative disorder and definitely. he like killed definitely. It. so like I mean, that kind of stuff oh. i'm just i'm just obsessed with it so that's the reason i couldn't leave wow. i can't leave that's, I'll never that's leave. amazing if i do something else to make money for the rest of my life that's fine but i will always be a storyteller yeah, man. And there's Corey nothing wrong hell, with being but... a storyteller, man. There's nothing <laughs> yeah, wrong with being man. a storyteller at all. I yes, mean, sir. you know, but when it comes down to it, you know, like you said, you know, you, you have to go with what you're passionate for. You have to just stick with what you, uh, not what you know, but what you love. There's a huge difference because I know a lot of people uh, just stick to what they're known for and continuing living off that. But you're doing more things. You're pushing forward in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, one, one thing I want to talk about is uh, what you just mentioned was like TV, you know, yeah. so, so you did a couple movies, you know, here and there, of course, especially in the beginning. And then you transitioned to the to to uh, TV shows. But, you know, what was it like with that transition in the beginning? Were you open to it? Uh, it was a learning experience. I'll tell yeah. you, I just did a soap opera this past year. And I hadn't done one since I started. Young and the and Restless, right? Young and the Restless. I've been watching it was, that for my whole life. Have you? Yeah. But, but not it's, lately. In the 90s and early 2000s, mid-2000s. It's still, uh, man, uh, respect. I'm telling absolutely. you right now. Respect the amount of work these actors do. 100%. Like, forget about, like, quality of the show. Like, it's a soap opera. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not a single cam. There's single cam and multi cams. You know, it's yeah. a multi cam. They have a sound stage, so there's you don't you don't get to go 3D and go to the other guy. There's always like, you know, <laughs> you, you're seeing it from like a play almost. Definitely. So th- it's a whole different type of like concept and idea. So some people think it's corny and hokey, and like you know they explain things with the dialogue way too much, <laughs> but they got to because they got to get that whole like crazy intricate 10 15 character storyline that's like Insane. people doing this to each other all in that like hour <laughs> yeah. you know, with commercials so really like 40 minutes and oh. then these actors forget about that the the actors show up at 7 30 in the morning yeah man it's it's a it's a, it's not the world of movies or tv mm. movies or tv it's hard everything's hard in this business when you're like you know it's also very easy at the yeah. same time it's not like we're <laughs> brain surgeons but <clears throat> there are some hard things but that is what the main actor in it adam grossman i think it is okay <clears throat> he played mark in it the, i play a bad guy who helps oh, him man. his victor's son in it and i play a bad guy who helps him i remember attack. victor very well victor yeah and so his son oh wow <clears throat> and he told me right in the beginning, this is blue collar acting. And it was, I hope he don't blow up his spot by saying that, but he's 100% right. Cause this yeah. is one of the hardest, you go in there at 7.30 in the morning, you got, hey, I didn't have pages and pages of dial. I had two or three scenes. Yeah. It was a, and I was still in my dressing room, like, don't mess it up, don't mess it up. Because wow. if you mess it up, like they need to move. They're like in and out on that thing. 
And so you got pages of dialogue, you're going in there, man, it is the most nerve wracking job as an actor. And you don't know whether you're going to get fired because you messed wow. up or the, or the audience doesn't love you. You could have a contract and they can't like, there's so many things. And I just give like respect to any mm -hmm. actor in a soap opera. So yeah, when I got back oh, into no. it, that was the big learning curve. So yeah. that was like threw me for a loop. Man. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember growing up a young and the restless, you know, I, I remember everybody, Vicky uh, or Nikki, Victor, uh, Victor, Michael, you know, like, I don't know who's alive and who's not anymore. Uh, I mean, I heard you say Victor's son. So I'm guessing Victor's, Victor's still, still, <laughs> still kicking, man. That's Same crazy. Old Victor. And you, you see those <laughs> actors when they're there. Cause that's, the, that's, they, that's, that's, they've done their 10,000 hours at that. Yeah. So when you look at a guy like that, he could possibly kill it in a TV show, like a normal yeah. TV show, a single cam movie style TV show. Oh yeah. Not only would he possibly kill it, he would definitely kill it. As long as, you know, I, it, their acting is good, which yeah. I remember Victor is killer. He's amazing. <laughs> he would kill it because the amount of pressure and stress that he, that he was going through from the beginning, he doesn't have that. He's like, Smooth sailing. I saw wow. him do a scene and he just goes up, got the he's got thirty thousand lines, kind of remembers it, goes through it, looks at it again, does his thing, next scene, next scene, next scene. And each Man. scene has another each scene has another five pages of dialogue. And the next scene has another six pages of dialogue. And he's shooting Man. through them like it's nothing. You could do that, and then when you go on a movie set or a TV show set where they're mm -hmm. doing a scene or two scenes in the whole day because they're turning around with the camera so you have when you're seeing a, an hour episode from a tv show that is literally uh seven to eight days work on a regular tv show so they That's only have to memorize right. these small little chunks yeah and then have that for the day a guy like victor would destroy it so <laughs> anybody who wants to talk dirt about <laughs> Any of the actors on soap operas, <laughs> try it out and tell me. Yeah, how, tell me how easy that is. I mean, you persuaded me not to. So in just this little yeah, conversation, no. man, I'm good. No, I'm it's good. Hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I had done uh, some acting myself and and background, and uh, I actually was in an episode as a ghost, um, and that was just so easy. That was like we shot for like four hours, and it was a twenty. Uh, it was eight minutes or so like it was like four hours of footage Isn't that crazy? of me and then i'm in the beginning of the episode the america's most terrifying places in america or something like that oh man i gotta see this i'm gonna send it to you actually it's really like, fun are you a good ghost i mean I, I thought i was pretty good but people was like that's not you i'm like that's me like look that's me you know <laughs> that's creepy but um yeah it was like it was like eight minute an eight minute segment but it took yeah. like four hours to film but i can't imagine what you're talking about like you know it's man just no it's, it's insane it's insane it's it's but that's that's a that's a beautiful thing about it isn't it i mean it yeah. sucks that you want to see all those little things that happened that you did yeah. like oh remember that part i did this but like you know, and also <laughs> extra work man extra work yeah. is like you know you know mem you're not memorizing lines or anything like that you know sure. but you're the 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 amount of like you sitting around 16 hours hours waiting and then you go oh. up and you go back and you go up and they don't treat reset. you like reset 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 second team you guys are called second team yep and or you know background and it's like and that's another thing that there, there's like this kind of unwritten rule in the business mm. that like you don't mingle with the background actors as a principal yeah. actor which like like yeah. that is also, you know, a lot of these people are trying to make their bones in the business as well. And that sure. might be a way to see if they want to do it. And these people are part of the storytelling, you know? And so yeah, it's, man. it's a hard, it's also a hard and it's thankless sometimes because it is. the crew doesn't treat you the way you see you're the, they're, <laughs> they're, they're the first class and you're in the back of coach kind of you know yeah so it's like you're just hanging eating, on they're drinking the, the champagne <laughs> they're drinking the champagne and eating the caviar in first class and then 
coach in the back is like, yeah, we'll get to you in a second. You want some a pretzels? dried turkey sandwich? Yeah, not even. You don't get food. You get pretzels. They're not even warm. They're it's only been stale. sixteen hours. This Suck big, it up. This big package of pretzels. There you go. You know, and it's terrible, so it's like man. it's not that bad. I mean, but yeah. it's you know, it, it has that feeling. It's close to it. Yeah. You sit yeah. and holding the holding places are this tent filled with hundreds of chairs. Sometimes there's like a little yeah. heater in there when it's really cold. Like not even that, <laughs> you know, and they don't, they don't abuse them. I mean, the, no, <laughs> it sounds like we're talking like pure no, abuse. No. It's not. Especially if you're non-union, I don't know. They might, yeah. but if you're a union, <laughs> if you're a, a SAG extra, you're treated yeah. well, you get oh, good yeah. pay. You get sometimes better pay than some of the like guest yeah. stars even, oh, yeah. but, but it's still like, it's, it's not yeah. thank it's a thankless kind of job and like respect <laughs> respect to the extras you've been doing this for like i said longer than i've been alive i mean that's pretty that probably makes you feel really crazy or old or bad but i mean it's all of the above <laughs> <laughs> but i mean all you've been above. doing it man and uh you know you you really have no um intention on stopping and um i mean i think it's amazing i think it's amazing that we're able to connect like this and you know, for someone that I was just watching last night or, you know, 25 years ago and such, like, here we are, you know, it's full circle and it's come down to this. And, um, so you know, cool. man, I'm sorry. I, I, I ate up all this time just t- talking oh, about this, nonsense. This is what it's your about, audience, man. Yeah, but your audience is like nostalgia audience. You want to hear um, some stories? Is there anything, any questions you got for me about? Actually, stuff, yeah, we, we could actually end it on a, uh, on a couple different questions that I always ask people, but. Yeah. Um, okay. So what was your memories of the nineties? What was the most treasurable, you know, kind of memories out there for you in the business or just in general, just in general. Oh, the Cause remember, I mean, you remember a lot of people have seen other podcasts if you want it or, you know, interviews in the past, they okay. know the stories. So, okay. Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon mm. commercials in general, like hot wheels commercials, I was part of an oh, I was part of an Apple Jacks commercial campaign, so I got yes. to I, I was I love those commercials, and I also got to be a part of the We Eat What We Like commercials. I used to watch them, and then I got to be yes. a part of it, and then I got to watch them again. So like that 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 I felt the feeling of nostalgia in the present in the '90s. Like wow. I felt that feeling wow. even like Nickelodeon slime. You yeah. can't do that on television. All that. Right. I got to audition for all that. I wasn't Come on, very good man. At, I wasn't very good at writing comedy and stand uh, comedy, so but, but, I, didn't, I didn't get it. But I got close. I got close. <laughs> I got in the room, you know. Did you get slimed ever? No. Oh. Uh, and I like I, Danny Tamborelli's uh, Danny Tamborelli's yeah. my good friend. And oh, he was that. on all that. And then he was yep. on the show. I forgot the name of it, but he would get slimed once in a while. Yep. And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, but no. <laughs> That's my dream is to get Man, I used to, Here's how crazy I was, how I was so into that culture, even though I was part of it, I was also mm-hmm. so into it. When I was a kid, I was looking up and I didn't, there was no internet at the time. So I don't know if it yeah. was encyclopedia or I don't know <laughs> how I figured it out, how to look it up. But I, I made slime at my house oh, because come on, how I was trying to figure out how they made the slime. And so I like I found different ingredients and I started making slime, food coloring, <laughs> flour, jello. I was like doing all what? these crazy things because I was so into that. Co- I was a fan of Pete and Pete before yeah. I got to be in Pete and Pete. Definitely. Definitely. And I got to be an extra in Pete and Pete wow. and for the first. That was my first job, actually. My first professional job in SAG was That's I was crazy. in the summer vacation Pete and Pete episode. And then with Mr. With Mr. Tasty, and then oh, Danny and I became friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then after that, I booked the Ducks. I never had a speaking role, or I said like one or two lines. Yeah. And then after that, I did the Ducks. Danny and I became friends. And I never knew, and I don't know, and I never asked him, and I should ask him, <laughs> if me being in the Ducks with Danny had anything to do, if he ever like had to put in a good word for me. Because next thing uh, I know, uh, a year later, I'm a character on Pete and Pete. 
Like Whoa. coincidence? Uh, I think not. I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, he said. I think he did say that it had nothing to do with it, but I don't know. He might be lying. So the culture, the culture of yeah. the the kids shows and all the TV shows, that was like, that's what I remember mm. of the '90s. I still can smell it and taste it. And it's so weird because growing up, you know, I was a young kid then, and I just, you know. I didn't take time, you know, just time was, you know, as my childhood, Ch you know, time was just flying by. The shows were just going on air, then off air after two years or three years. And, you know, yeah. I just didn't, but I can tell you this, like, you know, I miss the time so much. I seriously do. Um, I spend most of my life uh, nowadays working, but also coming home and binging, you know, the Amanda show or, you know, Phil of the Future or Art. Oh, that's so awesome. I mean, what about, know, what about the secret world of Alex Mack? There's another. So, hey, dude. Oh, hey, man. dude. Um, oh, some oh. of your shorts. So, yeah. And, I, and, and I'm like, and I'm like, I sit around because a lot of my friends now that are child actors. So I'm doing this documentary on child actors. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw that in there real quick. We're going to talk about too. <laughs> <laughs> but like a lot of my friends I met through doing these uh doing these interviews with a bunch of different people michael ray bauer yeah who was in suit your shorts mm -hmm. you know natanya ross Natanya beth ross who's like <sighs> my dearest dearest friend one of my best friends i love her to death wow. was just at her wedding last a, a couple months ago in uh, oh, la <laughs> she was uh she was in the secret world i keep on saying the secret world it was a secret world right uh i remember secret Amy life secret, secret life of alex mack man i'm horrible oh, i love no the show but, <laughs> but yeah i remember she, alex mack <laughs> yeah alex mack she was in alex mack and what? like i'm friends with all these people now yeah because of me kind of like getting back into it so man i'm with you i'm like yeah living the dream around <laughs> myself with nostalgia and i don't yeah. even realize i'm doing it yeah <sighs> That's I had a conversation with someone in the uh, she's a, a singer in the early 2000s that I became friends with through this show. And I was telling her the same thing. I said, you know, it's weird, you know, because when I talk uh, when, when I talk to all these people, all these different people that I just loved as a child and even love today, you know, it's just like I get these, this different kind of feeling whenever I'm speaking to them because it just brings back the memory. Like, you know, my buddy Greg Raposo from uh, Dream Street. Like it is oh, yeah. mind blowing every time I speak to him because it's, I just remember seeing him on TV and just, you know, performing with Jesse McCartney and their band. And, and it's just weird. It's come to this. Like you just said, it's just weird that, you know, all these years later, you're, you know, you're friends with these individuals and you talk to them on a daily basis. And I mean, I don't know, man, I, I feel the same way. Like I'm surrounding myself with, with this as well. And, it's, it's just pinch me, the pinch me moments, right? Yeah, it's unbelievable. And that's what I live for. I'm an adrenaline junkie. People ask, like, why do I still love acting? Because I'm also like such a hard business. I'm an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. And I live, I live for, I live kind of for uncomfortable moments sometimes, which sure. is weird. Like, I don't like them, but I like the feeling of knowing that I'm going to get to a pinch me moment wow. if I push through an uncomfortable moment. And that's like the key. That's well said. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, I, I do. I do want to end with uh, with uh, your documentary. Like, what's going on? What what's what's the thoughts? Uh, the, the thought process of creating this documentary. What's it about, man? Give us some information. Yeah. So the documentary is called "Stigma Raised in Hollywood." We've been moving back and forth between the names "Raised in Hollywood" or "Stigma Raised in Hollywood." Uh, we hit a lot of. It's basically, a, it's about, uh, it's my journey as a former child actor to address the idea that there's a stigma attached to being a child star. For sure. You know, and there's a stigma attached to especially child stars that end up not making it. And there's no in between. There's either you're completely wrecked and messed up if you're a former child star mm -hmm. or you're out of the business completely and you're a lawyer. There's nothing like, oh. are you, still, you know what I mean? There's, I know who you you're know? talking about. Well, yeah, you're talking about, wait, who am I talking about? You're talking about uh, Chubbs from uh, Chubbs. Goonies. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, you know, right? But like yeah. that man, I'm, yeah. I'm sure he's a well-adjusted human being. I haven't Absolutely. seen him in years. 
but he could be like, you know, smoking on the pipe and nobody would know it, but he's <laughs> yep. a lawyer. So it's fine. He's yes. not in the limelight. Wow. But you got the, you know, so there was this idea of like, you know, uh, somebody said to me, how you seem pretty normal being a child star. Yeah. And I was like, and you know, at first I was like, oh, that's cool. But then I was like, I kind of like felt a little offended by the whole comment because for my fellow child stars, because like, what is like, you know, is that, a, is there a stigma attached to it? Yeah. Is there wow. is a plausible stigma? And so it was kind of like, well, you know, I do know a lot of kids that did kind of go through some hard times that were child yeah. stars. So maybe I'm not right about being offended by it. Maybe there is something to it. Mm -hmm. So it's my journey to see, you know, what it is that basically all of us, you know, former child stars, uh, this, I'm basically reciting my t trailer, but it's, uh, it's true. Uh, it's it's yeah. what it is that all of us former child stars have within us that is uh, so powerful and sometimes so toxic, you know? Wow. And so yeah. it's basically that journey. So stigma, uh, I put, pitched people uh, to get them to be part of it. You know, yeah. my former, I was in a school called Professional Children's School, um, the great school they are awesome to the kids they are like hmm. wholesome awesome school but when i pitched them the trailer and i showed stigma to them uh they were like Yee. you know we got parents paying like the, for our the kids on, going man. to the school and so nobody wants to touch that idea everybody's afraid to touch that idea man. so the documentary has been taking all these turns left and right uh approaching not only what it is about child stars yeah. but what it is about the culture what it is about the narrative of child stars that gets everybody so scared gets people worried to talk to corey feldman you know like people Oof. that guy went through some stuff and yeah. like they write him off as some crazy dude and crazy he might be he might be eccentric but doesn't mm -hmm. mean what he's saying isn't true and like there's other yeah. people you know and then but then you got the people like you know like I worked with Natalie Portman when I was a kid yeah. and you have, her, and she's well adjusted, but nobody, nobody tries to like find out dirt on Natalie Portman and they yeah. shouldn't, they shouldn't try yeah. to find out dirt on anybody. Sure. But they don't because she's an A-list celebrity and she yep. has her pirate ship together. Wow. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So it's like that whole concept. So it's something that I was uh, addressing. We had to stop because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, my business partner, Chris Canote and I, uh, with brand new pictures are getting back into it and we're, uh, we're going to be making it this summer. We're going to, we're going to bat away at it. And if you see, you'll see us, you know, going through the hard times of even trying to make it, yeah. but I'll, I'll get it done and it's going to be, it's going to be epic. And you're going to see a lot of, uh, familiar faces. Man, that sounds incredible, man. I mean, cause like you just yeah. said, like, you know, we, we, we turn on the news and uh, we, we see different things like uh, so-and-so has been arrested, you know, like been a good girl, good boy, her whole life or his life. And it just, it shocks the and nation. And then Hollywood just, you know, put them there, you know, and there's, yeah. you know, I've heard a lot of stories about, you know, there, Corey Feldman came, brought up a good point. I was interviewing him for it and he put up a wow. good point. Yeah. 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 I got Corey Feldman. I want to got him. Sway, Sway. I talked to Sway Calloway about on, fame. Man. I go on the Sway show. Thank you. My friend Devin, who I brought wow. my friend Devin, my friend Devin Barton or DJ DB or DB. Uh, he, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to like say his, his wrong name. He's got a podcast on now and everybody's got to watch this podcast. God, I don't remember the name. Oh, well, that's I'll not good. It to you. I know it'll, it'll be underneath. He just started, <laughs> but he he's one of Sway's uh, in Sway's universe. He's, he's a DJ with oh, a DJ Wonder, on. DJ DB, and I grew up with him. Brought him to the Ducks when I was a little kid. I wanted like Man. I was I was friends with him when I was four years old, uh, and I brought him to the Ducks, and then we stayed in contact our whole lives. He ended up being on Sway, and he would bring me on to Sway once in a while. And Sway was a fan of Gossip Girl, I found out, which is weird. <laughs> and I love it, though. And then so, like, you know, Sway would give me a shot to, like, come up there. And I came up there and talked to Sway, put it on the podcast. He was like, use whatever footage you want. And wow, I put man. it on put it on the, the documentary. And 
I got Sway in there. I got a lot of recognizable faces, a lot yeah. of people that, you know, uh, that everybody wants to hear from, you know, about like yeah. what, what did they do? Got my boy, Sean Weiss, got a lot of the ducks, all the heavyweights. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to put this out there. Judd has helped me with it, has helped finance it. Judd Apatow amazing, has man. helped with advice on it. Um, but I'm trying to get that Apatow productions in there, but you know, yeah. but he's been, but he's been, he's been really it's helping coming. me out. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm hopefully going to get him to be on it. I'm going to try to get Ben still. I'm trying to get a lot of the people that were in my childhood you yeah, know, area to idea. be on it. And, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be epic, man. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm yeah. very much looking forward to it. Uh, any, any, anything that we can do personally to help, man. I mean, um, I appreciate that. it's just, it is something that's, that's, I feel is great, uh, grave importance, um, you know, and in an industry of the unknown as, as it is, you know, <laughs> cause Man, like you said, no one wants to talk about it. Like, you know, whatever that's happens, another thing. <laughs> don't ask. That's another thing. And it's also, nobody wants to talk about the industry itself. No, like there's a no veil way. in front of Hollywood and the only things you actually hear about are like the clickbaity things, but you don't yeah. hear the true stories about actors being on television shows, working on television shows and bartending on the side or waiting yeah. tables on the side. You don't yeah. hear about, you know, Corey Feldman who talked to me and told me that basically he was renting out a room in his friend's mansion while he was going out with Paris Hilton because he was broke as a joke while being stopped by paparazzi in the street Driving, oh. driving, driving his friend's Porsche so it looked like it was his Porsche, or having Paris help, have having letting Paris letting him drive her car, and you know, like there's all these things he talked wow. about, and yeah. he didn't care, and like God bless him for yeah. that. He didn't care because it's like these are like the veil of Hollywood it needs to be pulled back a little bit. Because, Definitely. Like then you get to see the human side, and I think that's ultimately what I want to get at is like showing the human side of this yeah. business that separates us from humanity almost man well first of all congratulations for even making it i mean for even Thanks, making brother. it happen i mean seriously Thanks. man you always you always see you know like brad pitt's doing great you know jennifer aniston's doing great like you know george Clooney's doing great but then you you have all these different people that like you know things happened uh that isn't you know on tmz or you know has never been revealed and yeah you know, I mean, look, Brad Pitt's a multimillionaire. He's got, yeah. <laughs> he's Brad Pitt. He's never got worries or problems, but yeah. he's got worries and problems. He sure does. He might have done some of them to himself. He can't go yep. shopping, you know? No. So, like, some of those things, it sucks, but you signed up for it. And if you have a problem with it, you know, swallow it up. But then he's got <laughs> problems with, he's got problems, the marital problems. And like, yeah. I don't know about the drama that happened, but there's the clickbait people saying either. clickbait things like, was he yeah. abusive? Was he not abusive? Like, all that stuff, like that's its own set of issues. But underneath it all is like a human issue, man. We're yes. all breathing the same air. We're all tying our shoes. We're all dealing with the same stuff, you know? 100%, man. 100%. Some, some more comfortably than others. But, <laughs> of <yeah>. course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to end off with one last question for you. And you could take a second to think about it, but you probably know how to respond already but um you know when, when it comes down to the 90s and early 2000s in particular you know wh what exactly do you miss oh. i think it's I, I miss the lack of connectivity yep Good answer. It's my answer. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I love that we're all connected now. I, I, sure. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to rewind and go back to what we had, yeah. but, but there was something pure about that. There was something, a lack of, the lack of connectivity made us more connected, mm -hmm. you know, like interpersonally more connected. Like we yeah. all, looked each other in the eye. I think, you know, a lot of people, they, they think they're on the spectrum now. Like a lot of kids are on the spectrum or, you know, and I think a lot of that, whether I'm not a doctor, I can't diagnose people if they're on the spectrum or not, 
I might slightly be on. I think that sometimes I am. Sometimes I won't hey. look people in the eye. But I think I think one of the main reasons that happens nowadays is because we're not practicing that connection with each other. Mm. And like, yes. it, it, it has to be forced. And back then it was forced by not being on our phones all the time, yeah. not being connected to every like thing that took away our, our bandwidth, yeah. our like mental bandwidth is only so big, you know? I mean, for me personally, man, I grew up entertaining people by singing and dancing. I grew up- really communicating with people like in different yeah. ways and like you just said i have no problems at all looking people in the eyes whenever i speak to them but the kids and the generations after me especially a couple generations down i notice that i have i have young kids that i know like you know my nieces and everything my nephews and they're so different like you know with isn't, their, isn't it crazy i remember when when my niece who is now 20 she was about 12 or 13 and she i told her you know your family's here get off the xbox 360 and go talk to them and she says you know she started freaking out i can't i can't i don't know how to talk to people and i said you gotta learn this is <laughs> how said, you do it i said this is how you do it i said you go yeah. in there and you look them in the eye and you speak to them have a conversation ask them how their day was i said you have to in order to make it in this world, you have to learn to be community, you know, and, and yeah. I mean, kid, and now, you know, that was, you know, almost 10 years ago. Now it's even way worse though. It is. I mean, and it's you like, know. <laughs> you know, and then when they say, I don't know how to talk to people, at least she had the, oh. the know, know it all to, to oh, she to was crying. say that. Yeah. And she it's was, like, you see how bad this feels right now? Yeah, this will be feeling that bad when you're in your 20s and 30s. It'll get into a strange. You can't explain them. It'll get into a depression and you'll feel lonely all the time. But like this at your age, at 13, 12, 11, whatever, like there's only a limited amount of time that you can start learning it until you yeah. set your ways and to unlearn that. Definitely. Lots of therapy. Lots of literally, therapy. literally. Yeah. And I mean, you yeah. know, and I know, you know, I'm sure your parents and even your brother, you know, everyone grew up differently, like in, in their times of growing up. So like, you know, I grew up in the 90s, you grew up, you know, in the the, the 80s and 90s. So, yeah. you know, but, you know, I'm sure you remember when your parents said, you know, used to say it used to be like this or, you know, uh, kids today, kids today, because uh, now we're still we're doing that. Oh, I'm saying, kids you know, today nonstop now. Like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> today seriously yeah like yeah. some of the words i have to like learn i feel so old oh uh, like I, I had to learn like i see the ootd or like all these little abbreviations i'm just like oh my god i'm too old just to relearn more things no you i can't just know do this <laughs> i just know what lap you know lol is and that's about it and that's all i know more than i should i know more than i should i know i'm also like you know there's also like business you need now you know, mm, you don't true. need it, but TikTok is good if you're e commerce yeah. uses TikTok all the time. And so I have friends yeah. who do e commerce <clears throat> and they're showing me stuff. And I'm like, TikTok, and it's like, that's the only way to sell now, you know? And it's like, wow, it's crazy that Man. social media has become actually like the biggest form of advertising in the world. So you need it if you're doing anything in business. Yep. I mean, so you kind of got to get with it now, unfortunately. I mean, when's the last time you heard somebody do radio advertisement? You know, I mean, oh, <laughs> it just, yeah, that's right. It just doesn't work. It doesn't, you know, hit or click the way posting on social media is, uh, you know, and doing yeah. TikTok video or Snapchat, but it, you know, it just, it doesn't spread on a radio like it used to, you know, nope. nobody um, does from a radio. The only, only, only reason you use radio now is when your Bluetooth's not working. And you have to <laughs> Literally. That's and the only reason. <laughs> it's in, da in Dallas, where I'm living in Texas. Yeah. It's basically uh, like a station that I don't understand, you know, the language I don't understand, <laughs> or it's it's an evangelical uh, radio station. Yep. Wow. And then it's like maybe you'll find like maybe you'll find like Hot 97 or something like that. <laughs> no, maybe. Hot 97 is only New York. <laughs> yeah, and man. Ghana Hot 97. <laughs> well, look, Aaron, it's been an absolute pleasure. 
Uh, what I want to first, uh, lastly ask is, uh, where can people find you, man? Uh, Instagram, Aaron Schwartz 11. So it's A A R O N and then Schwartz 11. Schwartz is a lot of consonants. I'm <laughs> uh, everything's Aaron Schwartz 11. So if you just look, Perfect. Aaron Schwartz 11 all over the map. 11 is my lucky number. Hey. My number when I was in the <laughs> number when I was in the ducks. That's right. That's right. Hey. Yes, sir. Well, look, man, thank you so much for joining me. I mean, seriously, it's been an absolute pleasure. And, uh, it's Same, just man. cool, man. Just going down memory lane. Uh, it's just unbelievable that we're able to, to, to just talk like this now. And, um, you know, I wish you success in everything you do for the rest of your life, man. I'm sure we'll be in touch, but thank you. Same uh, to you, brother. Same to you. Definitely just, uh, you know, we're rooting for you. We've been rooting for you since, you know, you were number 11, uh, you know, in that Jersey and, uh, it's just, my dog uh, <laughs> oh yes let's introduce the dogs real yes quick. let's sammy go let's... sammy's she... sammy's hey, i just got over i just got over covid and i think dogs get sick when you get sick oh so yes sammy's, been, sammy's had his a little cold oh. but she's doing all right oh. she's doing all right come here sammy <laughs> say hello come here baby you're a good girl she's like, okay. i can't get you oh man that's beautiful. that's beautiful man well aaron thank you so much buddy uh hopefully thank we can see each other soon again uh maybe at a uh comic con or or something that you you know you're going to be attending um, yes sir i'm usually very good at keeping track and end up meeting people everywhere i i attend a lot of cons so uh <laughs> definitely oh, by the way i want to give a shout out to my girlfriend savvy so this is why ah, Savvy, this is, she's been on. helping me. She's been helping me. I put her through a little like boot camp of writing and she's gotten really good and she's been helping me with that. So that's been, that's been all her. Come I didn't on, give man. her a shout out. I, Those I didn't lines give her a are really straight too. Look at that man. She, yeah. she, she got some OCD <laughs> like me. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Well, man, take care, buddy. Uh, you Thanks, know, the, the Frack and Friends show is, you know, you're always welcome back here anytime. And, um, Thanks, brother. And uh, take care of Sammy and, and make sure she's uh, she's healthy. And, um, and yeah, this is the Frack and Friends show, guys. Uh, um, again, Mr. Aaron, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care. See you. Thanks for having me. The Frack and Friends show is going to start and break up. I can stop and see tonight. Go again, talk about the 90s, 2000s for the win. You already know nostalgia is my kin. Now listen up and tune in. We can stop dancing tonight, night, night. Yeah, we don't stop dancing tonight, night, night. You already know the Frack and Friends show. Who? The Frack and Friends show. All right, all right, let's get to the show.